Saturday, September 6th, 1882, the mountains of Colorado. Silver miner George McCurving was the first to encounter the strange visitor a few miles from the settlement. The clouds were gray and gloomy and the hard rain pelted his hat. His head was wet, but his thick wool frock coat kept him warm and dry enough for he and his mule Felix to walk comfortably back to town before nightfall. There was only one narrow trail that led to and from the new Mueller silver mine. George traveled it daily along with a number of others and was the last to leave the Mueller today. Tomorrow was Sunday and tonight he wanted to get cleaned up enough for a few drinks and a dance or two with Millie Orman, a new seamstress in town. He'd seen her for the first time just weeks ago. He wasn't entirely convinced that she'd seen him yet, however. Nonetheless, he made up his mind to pursue her and thought of her as he walked. Through the thick trees as the sun began to set, George could see the faint lights from town. His boots sloshed in the mud puddles. He stumbled once, slipping on the slick slope of the trail, regained his footing and continued when a bright, quick flash of light caught the corner of his eye. Pale, almost violet. Lightning, he thought. George looked up at the sky and waited for thunder which never came. He trudged onward. He first heard the huff of what he thought was a horse far away, then the slight rattling of chains against hollow wood. The sounds were coming from a considerable distance behind him. He was sure he'd been the last one out. He shrugged and he turned his thoughts back to Millie and the whiskey that was waiting for him. The rain began to let up a little and he heard the sound again. Closer. George turned around and he looked to the direction of the mine. He could see it coming down the narrow trail about 50 yards up. The horse he'd heard before wasn't a horse at all, but two oxen. They were huge. Behind them loomed the silhouette of an enormous covered wagon. What the hell? he asked aloud. It was the biggest rig he'd ever seen. It was far too big to be coming down that narrow trail. Rocks and branches broke under its weight. He figured he and Felix ought to get out of the way and squeezed into the dense tree line along the side of the trail. The huge rig rolled to within a few feet from them. He looked up into the driver's seat and saw the driver wearing what looked like a monk's robe and hood. He couldn't see the man's face. Evening, he said, backing into the trees further. The driver glanced his way, then back to the trail with no reply. The rig came inches from him as it passed. The color of the paint, almost black to him before, now looked more like a dark purple or blue. George felt himself shiver as the wagon slowly creaked by. Who the hell is this? How did he get that monstrosity up that steep grade? For the first time, George's thoughts didn't go back to the coming night's festivities. Now he felt cold fear, but wasn't sure why exactly. Strange folks were always passing through town, often stopping to sell cheap junk and whatnot. But that was the mine up there, nothing else. Nothing else that he knew of, anyway. The wagon continued ahead and George did not feel the need to investigate. He wanted that thing away from him. Something wrong with that driver, he thought. George let a distance between them grow and continued toward town.